Hello and welcome to this month's Fire Chief's video message for August 2021. We're here at Station 32. Pete, welcome. Hey Chief, thanks. Good so, to be here. So we're at 32. It is August. It's definitely hot and humid. We're uh, as part of other parts of the country are dealing with this. You know, Maryland, no exception here in August as uh, we're dealing with the heat and haze. We've had a few incidents recently and uh, some changes in COVID. So let's talk about those incidents. Yeah, you know, the weather's been intense, as we all know, and uh, storms roll through here. So we've had, you know, some flash flooding, severe weather warnings and so forth. But uh, recently in Germantown, we had a lightning strike, a pretty significant fire, dozens of people displaced uh, as a result of that, a few firefighter injuries and so forth. But, uh, you know, pretty significant event there, but uh, good job by everybody. Uh, that was up on, uh, off of, uh, Great Seneca near Richter Farm and, and Northwest High School, Millhaven, and, and absolutely. Yeah. Garden apartment, fire from the roof, ended up being a couple of void spaces or multiple levels of attic inside of that structure, which created a, a challenge for the crews who were on the upper level looking for the fire to physically find uh, fire to put the, put the water on. Um, and, and thunderstorms were still rolling around the rest of the uh, Germantown area during that time frame. But as you said, flash floods just the night before and, and an event down in, uh, in Silver Spring as well. So a lot of, lot of continuous work as we, we go about 330 some calls, calls a day. COVID has got uh, uh, some changes and, and as an organization, as each and every one of us are adjusting, here we are in, in the uh, studio today supporting our, our partners from the PIO office, wearing our face covers. We, we're adjusting as MOCO uh, is to the indoor requirement as of August the 7th for, for publicly accessible spaces. Um, that message I put out to the organization talked about that the, since the firehouses are not generally publicly accessible, that intra station, the face covers are, are not required, but it's been since May that we've been talking about on the street, out in the public, on calls, out in public education, outreach activities, surgical mask at least at all times, and then you know N95s for, for patient interactions of moderate or higher risk. So a lot of stuff is changing. Yeah, so you know, masks are not a new thing for us. As you mentioned, uh, we've been using them for years with patient interactions. The pandemic came along, we made some adjustments and uh, you know, we've made some further adjustments as we came into the uh, summer uh, early and now we're uh, just kind of rebounding there. But it just makes uh, common sense to get back to the basics, washing hands or remember the basics, you know, wash your hands, social distance where practical, you know, put the face covering on if you're gonna be in a crowd and you know, get tested, get vaccinated. So those are the things we're uh, promoting yeah, these so, days. So as you said, testing is, is, is coming back around as, as the local governments, including Montgomery County, are, are implementing a, a goal of having a more frequent testing activity for its, uh, its workers. The opportunity for the community to be tested is still present. Vaccines are still ever, ever present out there. The question beholds, when will the, the under 12s be able to, to get the vaccine, how that impacts the school you know, uh, activities in just a few, few weeks. Um, we've had national night out recently. We're getting ready to roll into the, the, the fair. Uh, that's on, on, right on the doorstep here. Also October's on the doorstep, which is you know, that normal fire prevention month and, and activities. I've been communicating with the, the LFRD folks that we don't know what we will be able to do come October or the latter parts of September. So as, as we continue to plan for engagement activities, we're planning, but we're not uh, aware of or being able to say for sure what's gonna happen in two, three, four, six weeks from now. So a lot of uh, ex hoping everybody to, to remain flexible hoping everybody to remain accommodating to adjustments as they come. And the discussion of vaccination status, the discussion of testing is one that is not the best suited for our workplace. We're working as a team, part of the Montgomery team. 
on, on these activities and let's keep the public health and or the politics components of, of these discussions out of our stations and out of our environment and, and focus on that RRP that I talk about, respectful, relevant and professional and uh, be ready to answer that 911 call. And we, we know that there's a large group of our population, and I'm talking about the kids that are unvaccinated and uh, some other adults for whatever reason. So, uh, you know, we, as you said, we just have to be uh, pretty flexible and keep our eyes open as we go forward. And uh, again, the mask thing, it's not uh, really new to us. It's, it's not necessarily about the, max, uh, the uh, mask, it's more about the vax. So, uh, you know, a lot, lot changing, a lot going forward as we head into the, the fall and winter, uh, as a matter of fact. Talk about another change that just, uh, just rolled out. We were here last month. We talked about some great work in emergency medical and integrated health care uh, services. The Narcan, Leave Behind Narcan program expansion is right on the doorstep and be out here any day now. You know, and that's been a huge issue. Uh, not really, you know, our first responders know it. It's an uh, epidemic of uh, overdoses and opioid uh, use and overdose. So uh, this is just a, a natural step, a, a better uh, way to engage the community with the uh, Narcan leave behind. So the numbers are like 35, 34% increase 2020 compared to 2019, with a lot of that being due to fentanyl. The EMS supervisors have been able to, to do the leave behind Narcan program. This, uh, these little red kits that are, are rolling out to the stations as we speak are being able to provide two four milligram uh, nasal naloxone administrations, a, a safety factor, a face cover. These will be on all primary apparatus and can be left for anybody who wants or needs a, a uh, Narcan system. So great opportunity between Health and Human Services and Fire Rescue to expand those tools and our toolbox to the tools for our community uh, our residents. So more to come on that as, as we roll that out and have those tools available. And it's really been an impressive initiative, uh, not only this, but uh, the Narcan and I mean, it has saved lives and uh, you know, it's a quick response and, and uh, certainly people have overdosed and in some cases are you know, not breathing and uh, reaching uh, on the death's doorsteps and uh, certainly this has been uh, yep. a big interaction. We're also at a milestone time in, in you know, history or events. So this is the five year anniversary of Flower Branch, the, the Arliss Street or the, the, the Flower Branch Apartments explosion, which was 2016. And, in that event, which uh, tragically took seven lives and, and impacted that community then and still through to today. So, so that's a, a, a mark of, of history and remembrance. We're also rolling right around the corner. We'll be talking about or at the 20 year anniversary of 9-11 and, and the impacts that that had to the community, the department and the country. Um, and, and absolutely things have changed in public safety and changed in fire rescue since 9-11. So a lot of going on. No question there. And uh, certainly uh, just as a reminder, it's, uh, you know, uh, Station 5, Kensington has uh, some of those mementos from 9-11. Uh, yeah. yeah, so uh, that's something uh, very unique. And it's only, you know, a feat from probably thousands of people that pass by there every day. But, uh, you know, a piece of the metal from 9-11 uh, in, in uh, World Trade Center, a cornerstone from the uh, Pentagon, and then a remembrance for the uh, Shanksville. So it's, uh, I know uh, you'll be out there with some others uh, celebrating and recognizing that particular event. Indeed. So there's a lot, again, a lot going on. These, these events have and will continue to shape you know, the emergency response organization, public safety and fire rescue, um, as, as Sentinel events prior to that did as well. So uh, a, lot, a lot going on. We, we've not gonna touch on apparatus because things are rolling out and we'll be hitting more of that next month. Hiring and, and activities are kicking along. When we talk in September, we'll really have a good number, but the uh, Previously trained group is, is moving through medical as we speak, and they should be starting on September 13th. So 
a lot of activity heading, heading on at the academy. So, Yeah, that's going to be a busy place. And uh, we know that, uh, you know, the fall season typically and, you know, when you throw in all the pandemic, uh, you know, changes and uh, the response to the community, you know, the numbers have been uh, back to the pre-pandemic uh, number of daily responses for the most part. And uh, then, of course, we've had all these weather events, so we can expect those to keep on coming. Yep, and we're looking daily and, and all the time at the, the predictions for the pandemic, the call volume predictions as it relates to, to the, the next wave or what's going to happen this fall with the Delta variant and or the next you know, part to the pandemic. So again, everybody just be flexible and, and be, be adaptive to reading that novel hazard brief, getting that updated information so that you can be ready for your duty shift, your work day, or, or your involvement. Sounds good. So as we continue the dog days of summer and roll into hopefully a, a calmer and more uh, inviting fall, hydrate. Be ready for work, be ready for your duty night, because the, the impacts of the environment are definitely there against all of us. Take care, be safe.